our guest introduced. Our first guest on this panel is known for numerous Japanese video games and anime. You know her as Tanao Tsukuri, Brianna Knickerbocker.
what am I going to do? I don't have a job. I don't know anybody here. This is so freaking weird. And I saw an acting job on Craigslist, and then I like started booking things, and I was like, oh, acting. This is maybe what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I saw a voiceover job on LA Casting, applied for that, booked that, and then it all just kind of took off from there. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. It's so interesting. Everyone has a different path to get to voice acting. Yeah, there's not one way no. to get into the industry. Every, every voice actor you ask will give you a different answer. Absolutely. Awesome. Along those lines, you all work in a very specific type of voice acting. Um, what do you think makes what you do different from what other, I would say, run of the I don't want to say run of the but other voice actors do who aren't involved in doing dubbing in the end? Yeah, I mean, when you're working on a dub, it's kind of unique because the animation is set in stone. So when you're in the booth, you're watching the screen and you're talking as your character is talking on screen. And we, we all do all sorts of different types of voice acting. So video game work, uh, live action dubbing, radio, TV commercials. Uh, I do something also called Walla, which is replacing the background noises in different TV shows and movies. And there's also bits in there where you're kind of touching up people that are on the screen. So I'm a piece of Pennywise's voice in it. But you probably don't know that, and that's intentional. That means we did our job well. Um, so we, we do all sorts of different types of voice acting, and it's always great to step into the booth, but working in anime, you're watching the show, and then it's kind of that specialized piece of being able to time the performance and find something that's unique and still performed well, but in a certain time and cadence. What a lot of people don't realize with voice acting, they, they may look at voice acting and go, oh, that seems easiest of the types of acting, and I argue that it's the most difficult Agreed. form, because I, I've done stage, I've done on camera, and I'm sure like both of you have done those types of acting too, and when you're working with a scene partner, you're getting their energy. Yes. It feels more real because you have this human interaction. When you're doing ADR dubbing, that's, that's the style of uh, voice acting we do for anime, you're alone, isolated in a padded room. Can you bear your soul convincingly alone in a padded room? You know, that's that's... Uh, we have a lot of questions before we get to those. I just want to ask one more question. Demon Slayer is a huge franchise throughout the world. Even the manga has, you know, billions and billions of copies in circulation. What has it been like being part of something that is so widely popular, especially overseas? I mean, it's incredible. Um, watching anime go from something that you had to seek out that was kind of hard to find to something that's truly mainstream has been amazing. Um, and I think Demon Slayer was a very obvious, um, uh, the, the movie specifically, Mugen Train, that was a very odd, like specific point in time when you could say, this is now mainstream. This is something that most people recognize. Um, and it's, it's just cool. It's very cool. I think it's a dream. Like, we pour our hearts and souls into these characters and these shows or movies or games. And you just like to have the people out there love it as much as we do and love the heart and soul that we put into it is literally a dream. It, it's wild because when when we're performing these parts, we're not thinking about like well, where is this going to go because yeah. you have, you never know. You can yeah. never have any idea if your show's going to do well, how the fans are going to react, whatever. So for us, we're just going in the booth and telling these stories and, and living these situations yes. uh, as convincingly as we can. And so it, it's very, it's weird to go to an event and see, oh, all of these people have engaged with the same story. They it affected them. Yeah, which is why. Right. Like, wow, what a time. So it, it's really wonderful. Yeah, th these events are truly like a voice actor's applause. So thank you guys for coming and, and supporting us and like this energy. Thank you. We really love to hear Pentagon to have a lot of voice actors that come in and, and uh, spend time with us. So I think that's really awesome that you all also will come here this year. If you want to go ahead and step up to the mic and ask your question, we'd be happy to take it. Like, to know, to get 
to know, to meet, and connect with out of the cast? Well, I mean, Brandon mentioned when we work on the show, we're actually by ourselves. Um, but it's because of events like this that we get to hang out with each yeah. other and, and get to know each other more. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've enjoyed meeting a ton of the cast uh, and hanging out with them. I mean, like, we don't get a ton of opportunities to hang out, but Brandon and I were at a red carpet premiere for Demon Slayer just last weekend and got to spend some time together. There's some great shots of us walking down the red carpet, which, like, I, it's so rare to get those things. So, like, it's such a cool opportunity. Um, but I think you'll notice that they've assembled a really great group of actors, um, and it's it's been cool to you know connect with everyone on the show. Well, uh, at the premiere, I met Crystal, who's an engineer that worked on Demon Slayer. It was so yes. cool to meet Crystal because I had only met her remotely because we were doing Source Connect sessions when I recorded, and then I got to see her in person at the premiere. And it was wonderful. Engineers, it's like when you're in the booth, there's a trifecta. It's actor, engineer, director, and you need all three to be like on point for yes. things to work out. Yeah, it's just been really lovely getting to know and connect with everybody in person. I, I love my Demon Slayer family. <laughs>
Freeman. You try to make eye contact with another driver and do this. <laughs> it works amazingly well. So now you're, you're nice and warmed up. Then the next thing you do is get to the studio and you make a really dark, disgusting cup of coffee. Like flat tar in a cup, okay? The coffee that's so bitter it makes you angry. Take that into the studio with you, right? And then you take a sip between every taste and you're just like, eh, I'm not seeing no skin. So my question is for Bryce, uh, 
So you've done a lot of anime character voices. My question is, which one is your favorite that you've done? Oh man, I, I've gotten this question a bunch of times, and like, how can I choose? Like, I feel like I've won the anime lottery. Um, and you work so hard for every role. Um, you know, you become attached to them, almost like they're your kids that live in your head. And a lot of my kids are crazy, and I do not want to make them mad. <laughs> I mean, I can't choose. I can't choose. I have two questions. First, first one is, how did Inosuke learn English if he was raised by boards? So how did Inosuke learn English if he was raised by boards? Boards, I'm so sorry. I don't know. <laughs> that is a good question, and um, I have not read the manga. Have you guys read the manga? No, but I had it spoiled for me oh. by the eventually people come up, so I know everything that happened. I, I always warn people with these shows, please don't spoil it for me. Um, the, the way I love to do this is to kind of go on the adventure with the That's character. Really too. Um, so we have not got Inosuke backstory yet. So that is a great question, and I'd love to know the answer, too. And um, what was your favorite line from the voice acting team, sir? Ooh, do you guys have a favorite line? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the three lines. The three yeah. lines. <laughs> Again, I'm very bad at picking favorites, but I'll do a couple. Um, I, I love his laugh. It just makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> people to fight me! Fight me! <laughs> I told you he speaks and scream, and I can do that all day long. <laughs> so impressive. Like, did you get fatigued? Uh, not doing that voice. Other characters beat me up. Like, I cannot scream like Aaron Yeager or Kirito. Like, I lose my voice recording as those characters, but there's like a pocket in my voice for Inosuke that just kind of works, and I can do it all day long. The technique sounds almost like a metal screen, like, like a very healthy metal screen. So yeah. that doesn't surprise me that you can do it for a while, but I'm still in awe of it. I know, you can do it for so long. You know, when we were talking about like people's backgrounds, like my background is teaching martial arts. I wasn't formally trained as an actor, so um, I used to go into the gym and teach kids class and just yell at kids and yell at kids! And <laughs> parents would take class and yell at their parents! <laughs> When you're doing that, like just now, you're engaging all of these muscles and you have this incredible, beautiful abdominal support that you have. <laughs> <laughs> Says the classically trained singer. <laughs> so everyone pulls from different things, from their own life, and that's where I get a lot of my motivations from the martial arts training. And I know what it feels like to get punched in the face and kicked in the head, so, um, you know, I, I pull that authenticity into these parts, too. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have a question? Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Sure. Um, what is your favorite thing about voicing the characters that you voice? It can be any character that you voice, just what's something about the character that makes it fun to be able to voice that character? Uh, it's hard to narrow this down to one thing. I mean, more than one. I, I try to find something I love about each character. Um, like, working on Miraculous Ladyblood Bug. I play Cat in the line. Um, and I think my favorite thing about the show is that I've won cool dad points. Um, my daughter is seven, and a lot of her friends watch the show, and she goes to school and says to her teacher, like, my dad's Cat Noir. And, she, and you know, her teacher's like, that's so cute. Like, your dad went as Cat Noir for Halloween? Um, she's like, uh -huh. So, like, I've won some cool dad points, and I just love that I've um, been cast in a show that can do that. That um, not only the kids in her class watch, but the parents like the show too. So, when I get the reactions of, like, oh yeah, Cat Noir, like, parents freaking out, like, I just, I love it. So, um, I have a lot of, like, morally gray characters. And I mean that like in a comedic way, like Gen and Dr. Stone and you thought all oh, the Eden Slayer definitely like has a little bit of trauma, a little bit of trauma. Um, but I'd say like the range, like the comedic range of some of these characters is really fulfilling to be able to engage with on the movie. That's a good way to phrase it. I was gonna say Kumoko from Soma Spider, so I had the comedic range, like all the crazy situations and 
talking literally 50 miles per minute. It, it was insane. If you haven't seen it, go, it's insane. You should watch it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Um, I was just wondering what your favorite, um, your most impactful line and corresponding moment with that line was in the show, for your character. In the, in the show, or did you say in the audition? In the show. In the show. Um, so, with Yudaro, he has a younger sister, right, Hidaki, and that is very formative for him in his story. I have a younger sister who's seven years younger than me, who was also, uh, like, tiny, blonde, blue eyes, beautiful, and so it was really, it was interesting playing that role, and specific, I don't want to have any spoilers here for people who haven't seen it, but there is a very important part in the last episode of the Entertainment District arc where he talks about a very specific regret that he has, and it it broke me in the booth um, because it was like it, it was starting to like blur that line between story and reality for me. Um, so when you, when you hear that, that's that's me being true, absolutely truthful and doing the exact same way. So um, so yes. Um, but you kind of know when it's going to happen, 
And if you're with a good team, they'll save it. So like with Sword Art, we save the last 15 minutes of every session just to scream. Yeah, sometimes it's just unavoidable. And yeah, I lose my voice all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I close enough to the mic? Okay, um, I don't know if you've seen this show or if you know about this show, but um, Bryce? Yes? Do you know how much a nose case sounds in acts like Muscle Man from regular show? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have not watched regular show. I'm not familiar with the voice of Muscle Man, but like, it's funny that that's happened and that people like connect roles to other roles. They're like, oh, this character sounds like this character. Yeah. And sometimes like as voice actors, we take inspiration from different kinds of sounds or different voices, you know, there might be someone we hear as we're traveling. And I, I always like, if I hear an interesting voice, I I'm drawn to it. Um, but no, there was no inspiration from Muscle Man inside Inoscape's performance, but it's funny to know. I'd love to, to meet whoever that voice actor is and yell at him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so this is utterly uh, like not about voice acting, but do you guys know how to get a girlfriend? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right? 
I sneak a lot of cat puns into Miraculous Ladybug. I love it. Um, they're not in the script. We get to a moment and Ezra, the director, and I go, I think this scene needs a cat pun. And we sneak into the show. I love it. Awesome. Thank you. We have about five more minutes left. Thank you. Um, this question is for Brandon. Um, like we said earlier about the whole um, ending of uh, season two with Guthrie and um, his regret of what happened to him and Daki, do you think that if in the show, given more time, do you think that maybe Guthrie could have had a redemption with Daki or at any point like they could have? Well, oh gosh, I don't want to spoil anything, but I, I don't think he needed more time. I, I like how it ended because you saw exactly, you, you saw their relationship, complete, complete. And, and that's all I'll say. Thank you. If you could live like your character, would you? <laughs> no. Yeah, again, one of those shows where like you can't get too attached to anybody. 
because anyone can go kind of at any time. It's the nature of these these shows. Um, but that was a brutal. One. Oh, so. It's too much like my My Hero Academia experience. <laughs> Well, that is all of our time this afternoon. We want to thank you so much for joining us on this panel and asking the way to all of our Can you just yell happy birthday real quick?